The Resurrection of the Dead, according to the Gospel of Matthew. This is 6FT. Hello, this is 6FT, Six Foundational Truths, and today we are going to get into the Gospel of Matthew, his version of the resurrection. We're going to take excerpts. We're not going to explain every section, except for that I want to make a point of how significant that the resurrection happened and the type of things that went on. So let's start, start with a verse that's really before Matthew 28. Matthew, chapter 27, verses 51 through 53. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. You see, the price that Jesus paid, shedding his blood, giving his life as an offering, submitting to death, and going down into paradise or to Sheol, just the fact that that happened after the crucifixion, we see astronomical things happening in the earth. For one thing, the temple rent and twain for top, um, to top to bottom, signifying that God would not be meeting man here, but rather God would be meeting man inside through Jesus Christ's resurrected life that he would give. The other thing is that there were quakes and all sorts of phenomenon, and that many of the old saints got up and appeared to many people after his resurrection. So when Jesus got up, he had some people after him that got up and just thought, hey, I'm going to see some grandchildren. <laughs> so I just want you to, that's how powerful the resurrection was, that it actually shook the earth. It actually caused the earth to react just because the power of the resurrection took place. But there's so much more to this. Excerpts from Matthew 28. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning. His clothing was as white as snow. And the guard shook and feared him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and indeed he is going before you in Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to um, start preaching because I can't hardly get into the resurrection accounts without preaching. Okay. So oh, understand that when they were coming, they were coming to anoint a dead body. They were coming to see a dead Jesus. 
And I'll tell you right now, it is very much like that today. People go to church to experience a Jesus that doesn't talk. He doesn't touch. He doesn't heal. He doesn't save. The only person that does anything there is, well, the the pastor says a few things, the choir sings a few things, they give a few announcements or whatever. But people to this day still come to see a Jesus that really isn't real. And I want to say to you that when they came, they had an angel to meet them. An angel was so magnificent that the soldiers, when he saw him, they quake, fell over backward, just like they were dead, as the account shares. And the angel is saying, hey, look, he's not here. Look at the place where he was. He's not here. He's risen, just like he said. Now go ahead and tell his disciples that he's going to meet up with them in Galilee. And today, I'm, I'm sharing with all of you, we need this experience today. We need to have a point where we meet Jesus and he establishes us. Now look, the resurrection only happened that once when Jesus got up the grave. He was the, got up out of the grave. He was the first. But I'm saying, can't you see what God is saying to many of you? He wants to meet you, to show you who he is, to reveal himself to who he is. Yes, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. But I'm telling you, if your believing means that you respond to Jesus like he doesn't exist, like he does in so many of our churches, you know what? The attitude that most churches have, they would go on with their ceremony if God died. Not that it's possible for God to die, but that's just how much we don't, we're not even moved anymore. The revelation of Jesus Christ doesn't excite us anymore. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is everything. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, the apostles did eventually get there. They, they, they moseyed on down to Galilee. And when they saw Jesus, many of them worshipped him. But some were like, some of them didn't really believe. They doubted. Why is that put in there? You need to realize that some of you have heard the message of the gospel, but you've doubted it. You haven't committed the, 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 the unforgivable sin here. These are the people that saw him face to face, that walked with him, that, that slept on, on, in the wilderness with him. And these are the people that saw him at the crucifixion. He's back from the dead and they still have doubts. So you and I should not be ashamed of our doubts. We just need to let the Lord have them. And I just want to say to you right now, if you have a doubt, understand you cannot be a Christian if you don't believe the resurrection, because that's what the cross was all about, to pay the price so that he could give you not only the gift of righteousness, but Jesus says a statement that I want you to remember. He says, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Now, I want to break this down. Wasn't Jesus the almighty God before? Yes. So why is he saying all power is given to me in heaven and earth? Because while he was almighty before, he was not almighty when it came to our redemption. We were dead in our sins. But Jesus fulfilled the scriptures 
and fulfilled the cross. He bore it. He took it. He died our death. And he purchased power. He purchased. It was like money. It was like in God's economy. He made a purchase of all purchases. And he paid for our redemption. And because he did, he received power over our redemption. He now has the power to make unholy men righteous. He has the power to forgive their sins. He has the power to give them an eternal home and glory. This is the power that he's referring to at the resurrection. So he says to them, all power is given to me in heaven and earth concerning every matter of the redeemed, every matter of the kingdom. Now go in that power. Boy, if you never get anything else out of this, this particular message today, you get this. The power that God, that Jesus, that the Holy Spirit is asking you to go in is not your own. It's the power that Jesus had when he resurrected from the dead. He's saying, go with this power backing you up and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all of his commandments. Ooh. The King James softens by said, teach them to observe all things. But I'm going to tell you right, right, tell you right now. And John's gospel says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So in the light of that, teach people to obey and submit to every commandment, everything that I've commanded you. And I want you to know I'm with you even to the end of the age. So this is the empowerment version in Matthew. Now, Mark's gospel, it's spelled out much more, but it's the same power. It's just that in Mark's gospel, it's more explicit and it's more specific. But Matthew is saying this power that God gave to me at the resurrection concerning your redemption, the power that caused the, 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 the veil in the temple to rent in twain top to bottom, the power that caused the earthquake, the power that caused the, the, the old saints to get up out of their graves is given to me. I give it to you. Go in my name, baptizing in the name of Jesus, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you baptize in the name of Jesus, that's fine. And if you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's fine. Because God knows who, who his name is. <laughs> okay. So. Anyway, I sure hope you enjoyed this. I, I enjoyed it. And we're going to continue to go through these different Gospels and their take and uh, their testimony of the resurrection. But God bless you. And remember, Jesus is coming back again. <laughs>